Hey, I'm like, I don't know if you knew this, but um, souls cannot die. <laughs> souls cannot Nose die. to me. And you are what you choose to be. I am. Mm-hmm. And today, I'm choosing to be a podcaster. And I think that's <laughs> really brave. It, truly, truly. I think I'll join you on that. Yes. And so we are choosing to be podcasting for you today. Hi, welcome to The Swamp. It's our podcast. It's an acronym. Stands for some whack-ass movie podcasting. And this month, we're covering good movies only. That's the theme. Strict, yeah. Fast and loose. Objectively good. Mm -hmm. What is under the umbrella of a film that would be good? Yes, we are covering Mm -hmm. it this month. Obviously, had to be The Iron Giant. Absolutely. You you messaged me and said, please. Please. Can we watch this? This has made, like, the short list for so many months. Probably since, like, the beginning of the podcast. So many months. Um, But I also wanted to shout out to listener Brooke Drew, who has requested this movie several times mm-hmm. and has shared um that their sister and them love the um scene between hogarth and kent mansley where he's like where are you going i'm going out <laughs> i love that uh, so shouts out to brooke drew and their sister and shouts out to iron man shouts out to brad bird shouts out to vin diesel why do you think it was this movie that sort of pigeonholed into him into the like acting corner of like I play the big thing that only says one word. Because, like, that's his shtick now. Uh, what Groot? Other... Oh, uh, yeah, that was... Tell me Groot and the Iron Giant aren't the same. It's the same. Like, it's the same. Because yeah. the Iron Giant himself, the titular giant, mm-hmm. the Iron Giant, only says 56 words in the whole movie. Yeah. So it's like Vin Diesel gets to show up for 20 minutes. Other Vin... than that, he's driving a car. Vin Diesel, yeah, he's too busy. He's stuck in traffic. Yeah. He, he's uh, he's too busy to think about family. Yeah. I've never seen those movies. Have you? What one? What are you talking Fast about? Fast and the Furious. Oh, no. No, never. Not one. You said he would be driving. What That's else all you... I know. Yeah, that he yeah. does the car movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just does the car movie. Right, yeah. You said family? I was like, huh? No, he, the whole thing of those movies is like that they drive, but they're a family. Oh, Christ. <laughs> yeah, see, I don't know. <laughs> I literally don't know a fucking thing about it. I uh, just know the song Tokyo Drift. Yep, that's <laughs> yeah, that's all you need to know. That guy dies, and it's really sad, and they made that song about it. Yep. Uh-huh. Yep, that's, that's all I know. Jen tried to pick a Fast and Furious movie for when we let her pick all. And I, hard veto. I said, Jen, pick anything. No vetoes. And she says, Fast and the Furious. And I said, no, I will be vetoing that. <laughs> I will not be talking about the Fast and Furious movies. I'm sorry. Yeah, no. I'm I'm. Tr- Starting to know a little more about them because you've got me playing this um, game called Movie Grid. Yes! Uh, Shouts out to Movie Grid. I learned about it from another podcast that also they play it on their TikTok. Oh, they like do it out that. loud That's in front fun. of. Yeah. And I was like, I gotta get in on this. I'm so bad at it. Oh, I'm horrible. I'll link in the description below. It's a game called Movie Grid, uh-huh. and it basically is three actors. And then three categories, yep. and it's like on an axis. Like, you know, yeah. you have to say, oh, you know, Mia Goth, twenty twenty four. What can I put in that square? Yeah, any yeah. movie that you know fills, and then it tells you the percentage. Yeah. So if you're like in the top one percent, that means you missed a really rare movie, mm-hmm. and that you're fucking oh. galaxy brained. But if it's like ninety percent, it's like okay, everyone guessed that. Like yeah, a common person, you know. Uh-huh. No um, cinephile. But it's a it's a cute little game. I like put it in with my New York Times rotation. Exactly. Like, do exactly. the connections, do the movie yeah. grid. Do you do the movie pyramid? I'm I'm so bad at the movie grid that it disheartens me. <laughs> and that I really I rarely ever get it a hundred percent. I would say I usually get like six squares. Love movie grid. Um Well, I wouldn't have put Jennifer Aniston. <gasps> Yes. In this move, I wouldn't have realized. Because this I almost picked when we did um, Sexual Awakenings Month. Because Dean, Her or D, yeah. Dean and Hogarth's mom. Hottest oh, couple. And I just want to be right in the middle of that sandwich. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Well, I understand. Do you Okay. Do you think that some of the reason that our generation had like a friend's renaissance or whatever. Or like a... Uh, like a weird attachment to it was because of the nostalgia of Jen Aniston. In this, this movie specifically? Well, I feel like so many people grew up with this movie. I don't think they I mean? knew. I don't think I knew until I was well into my adult years that she Maybe. was Hogarth's mom. But do you think mom. it's subconscious? No, I don't think so at all. I, I think people do just Do you think I just find her motherly? She is mother. Yeah. That's for sure. She actually, I would, I would actually not say she's mother. I think Jennifer Aniston is pretty mid to me. Is that controversial? I think she's like fine. Mm. 
I think she is fine. I also I think hate she, friends. I'm also a friends hater. I would want to get like a matcha with her. You know what I mean? No, like, I don't want to. I bet she's awful. I you bet think? She's awful. <sighs> she's that famous. You think she's chill? There's no way she's chill. You no, think she would like, just if, get a matcha with you? No. No, no, but if I was also famous okay. and like, yeah, we were on like a. Su- or if I was like her assistant. She, I was gonna say, I, I think, I think she wouldn't. If I was her assistant, she wouldn't treat me like dog shit. I think if I was her assistant, I would be door dashing the matcha to her house. Mm. Like, that would be the situation. I would uh-huh. never even see her come into contact with her. Okay. <laughs> like, that's. She's gonna stay up in her tower, I think. Um, uh huh. Love her. Love Harry Connick Jr. That is crazy. What? I also am obsessed. I love the voice actor for Hogarth. Mm-hmm. He's 12. Yeah. Thank God. And I'm like, why does Ho- why is the voice actor for Hogarth sound like sound so? And I was like, oh, it's because he's a child. Yeah. Like I'm like, how are they getting that voice crack? That's really authentic. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's because he is prepubescent. Thank God. Like in modern times, they'd be like Tom Holland is voicing oh my God. Hogarth, and I'd be like, guess I'll shoot myself. Right. Like Tom Holland is the live action remake version of Hogarth, and we're just gonna we're gonna <laughs> digitally alter his face to make him younger looking. Yeah. Even though he's 30. Uh-huh. Get the fuck out of here. That's what would happen. That's like, did you see The Boy and the Heron? Mm-mm. Really? Everyone said it was bad. Yeah, it was fine. That's... But I didn't... I, I watched the Japanese version with the subtitles. Mm-hmm. I didn't watch the dubbed version. Sure. So I have no... I didn't really watch it with Florence Pugh um, doing an old lady voice, but I saw a clip of it. Mm-hmm. Just cast an old lady, please. Yeah, right. Please. Like I get no hate to Florence. I get that you want her name on your poster. Yeah, and that's fine. But like, oh god, at what cost? There's so many people. Like this used to be a whole profession, just voice acting. They were good at it, and Mm -hmm. it's oh, and now it's so just. And even actors who took on voice acting roles, I think in the past took it a little bit more. I don't want to say seriously, but I feel like now they're like, Chris Pratt, we're just going to lock you in a studio. Can you be Garfield, Mario, and Sonic just all at the same time? We'll just use that for all of them. You know what I mean? Like, There's no way he's putting love into that. There's no way when they're like- I need him bombed. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not apologizing. He, why is he- That was just really triggering. He's the face. Like, he's the face of like- robbing voice actors truly of, he's ruining the industry he's already a bad actor yeah, yeah don't make Being him a listen bad to voice him voice actor too. on top of it just makes it even fucking worse Ugh. it's like despicable despicable me now in theaters oh uh, yeah despicable maxine <laughs> oh my god yeah if anyone um is interested in giving us two dollars and what eighty six cents? Yep. Um, we are covering Maxine this week on the Patreon. Yeah. So if you want to go check that out, it should be uploaded either by now or shortly. It so. should be bloated, like myself. <laughs> um, yeah, we're going to talk about Maxine. We both just saw it in theaters, mm-hmm. and we covered both Pearl and X in a joint episode uh, yeah. last year when Pearl came out. So. Mm-hmm. We wanted to finish up that trilogy, so of we're doing course, that over on the course. Patreon. Link in the description. Mm-hmm. Uh, but let's get into the Iron Giant. Yeah, so, please. did you love this movie when you were a kid? Y- yes, I don't remember. I didn't remember a ton of it, honestly. I know the gist of it, mm-hmm. um, but a lot of the plot was lost on me. I think. Um, I know, obviously, like it was going to be a whole thing of like the military wanted to destroy him, mm-hmm. and that was it. Um, but I loved this movie as a kid. Yeah, me um, too. I really enjoyed it. Um, and revisit it. Yeah, I like. I cried when I watched it. Just like now, I think mm-hmm. it's a great movie. Um, I think it's crazy that they don't make kids movies like this these days. But at the same time, like yeah, Hogarth getting chloroformed wouldn't fly. <laughs> right. Like we're. But we're... like, like, I don't know, man. I think just kids movies don't have. Uh, maybe I can't say this because, like, Inside Out 2 just came out or whatever. But I just feel like kids' movies, like, have such, like, nothing behind them these days. Yeah, I don't want to... I will hop on that bandwagon with you. But I will also preface it by saying I don't think I engage with animated 
movies or like quote unquote kids movies yeah. and kids media as often as I did when I was a child. Of duh, course, yeah. like duh. But I'm saying there, I'm like, but, what the fuck is Despicable Me for gonna get? And me? of course, I have the rose tinted glasses, the nostalgia of, of that course. everything that I loved as a kid is right and correct, and everything that is new is bad and wrong. Of course, that yeah. makes me feel like a boomer. But like, duh. Of course, I'm gonna have that perspective. Yeah. But I truly feel like, objectively speaking, I can look at what is happening in kids movies right now, and it's more of an anti capitalist sentiment than anything that I'm like they're making these movies to pump out toys exactly. to make products yep. to with you know spread mm-hmm. the capitalist tendrils of this IP as yep. deep as we can go and that's the goal mm-hmm. not to tell a story or exactly. make a piece of art it's purely for entertainment purposes because like I said what is despicable me for telling you I don't know I haven't seen maybe it I couldn't say maybe it has a fabulous um, I don't know, plot or whatever. Like, or like a, a message to the kids yeah. that, Is it you Despicable know, Me or is it Minions? I can't if, keep up. Even it's if you're me, the right? Minion that says banana, you can still get an education and become <laughs> the Minion with braces. I don't know. Like, what, what could that mean? Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. But, I mean, this... But... I mean, this still, like, hit a nerve with me today as an adult. <laughs> You are you are what you choose to be. Holy fuck, bro. Right. Right. I am not a gun. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. So I just felt like I watching this movie really made me think about like why is anyone over the age of let's just benchmark it 50? Why are they surprised that young people are like so radical when I'm like look at the movies you you showed us when we were kids. Oh, yeah. How am I not supposed to be like anti-imperial, anti-fascist, anti-capitalist. Yep. When the, you were showing me a bug's life, mm-hmm. you were teaching yep. me, you were teaching me the foundations of Karl Marx's yep. communist manifesto when I was three, and you think I wasn't gonna turn out like this? Like, come the fuck on. But you did it to yourselves, baby. This movie was, is just way more political than, you know, looking at it through that adult lens. I was like, they would never let this slide. Uh, the way that they portrayed the cops in this yep. movie, did they still make, I feel like anti-authoritarian kids movies is a sort of interesting topic for me because like you're, you're an adult telling kids that they shouldn't be listening to adults. Yeah. Right. You're an adult telling kids, oh, the adults around you are not mm-hmm. trustworthy. Yeah. They are lying to you. They're manipulating you. And you yeah. as a kid need to use your smart kid brain to figure out the real problem, mm-hmm. right? You need to hide the monster in the woods because they don't understand. Mm-hmm. That's so interesting to me because you're, you're teaching, yeah, a young generation yeah. of people to be like against authority. Yeah. This movie specifically, the way they portray the military and the police yep. So Kent Mansley is this FBI agent character Mm -hmm. who basically comes to their house. I guess Hogarth's mom is renting a room, which is just a really convenient, like, plot point just to be like, he lives here now, right? Exactly. Like, okay, FBI agent just lives with Hogarth now. Yeah, sure. Sure, whatever. But the way they make this man so blatantly unlikable and untrustworthy mm-hmm. and he's supposed to be like the authority figure that in real life kids are told to trust exactly. right exactly like you trust the police you trust sure. adults right yeah, yeah. but this man is so obviously does not have this kid's best interest no. at heart to the point where once we're at the end of the movie he is actively ordering the military to yeah. shoot guns yeah. at this child. Air strikes. Right? So it's like you as a kid feeling iffy about this are only then uh-huh. validated like, oh yeah, I should not trust yeah. people like this. Do you think it's because, I mean, and obviously it, it all goes back to capitalism, um, but because people used to actually have like artistic freedom in studios and I think like a lot of artists kind of also hate The authority. Yeah. Well, so if you want to get into some lore about this movie. Yes, I know you have so much lore. Shouts out Brad Bird. Brad Bird also directed The Incredibles, if you are not familiar with his work. He's in Ratatouille as Mm -hmm. well, I believe. Um, So he does jump to the Disney ship in his career. For the better for all of us, you know, we would be without The Incredibles if it were not for for Brad Bird making the switch. But this movie had a lot of spite driving it, which I love. Oh, fabulous. So, originally, if we want to get to the origin stories... Doesn't it have something to do with Sylvia Plath? Yes. Okay, so please. Ted Hughes was is a poet, an English yes. poet. And he wrote a book called The Iron Man. And he wrote this book to tell the story to his kids to help them cope with the, the death, death of their mother 
Sylvia Plath fucking stuck her head in an oven Mm -hmm. and said, I am out of here. And Ted Hughes said, well, our children are quite upset with this. So (laughs) let me come up with a story about, you know, a giant, giant Iron Man um, Uh to help, to help grapple with some of that emotions. Yeah, Yeah, which makes sense as to why souls never die. Well, so actually the movie makes it way more emotionally deep than the original. The original book is kind of just like a giant iron guy who like fights a dragon. It's, like, very... The Cold War context, uh-huh. like, a lot of it was added in the movie. Interesting. It's very just, like, kind of loosely based on the premise. But weird little middle section here. Pete Townsend of The Who, the yes. rock band. Pete Townsend then writes a musical called The Iron Man based on this book. Interesting. It's a musical. It pops off. Yeah. It's kind of doing well. Uh-huh. People from Warner Brothers see this musical and they're like, we need to compete against Disney. We need... To turn this into a kids' movie. Okay. Stat. They buy the rights. Yes. Flat out. They get Brad Bird, and Brad Bird's like, no music. Yeah. No. And they're like, well, doesn't matter. We already cut the check. Yeah. So we don't care what you do. Because yeah. they said, you have a third of the budget and half of the time as what Disney has. Shit. So Disney gets five years, you get two and a half, right? Jesus. They're like, that's quick they're like, for an animation we're gonna in 99. Take, we're like, we're going to give you this, right? We're going to give you this project. Yeah. Um, you know, nothing. Do whatever you want, with yeah. it, basically. And his pitch, Brad Bird's pitch to be the director for this project, was connected to that his sister died of gun violence uh, from her husband. Jesus. And so Brad Bird had this connection to gun violence, and he was like, well, this mm-hmm. story really speaks to me because of the, mm-hmm. what if a gun didn't want to be a gun? Yeah. What if, you know, what if the gun who killed my sister had sentience? And, and said no. And we could tell it, like, you know, this is bad, right? Yeah. And that really won the studio over. Oh, and they sure. were like, that's beautiful. Do Here's a million dollars. And he yeah. was like, yeah, okay, uh, cut cut all the music. No yeah. music. Eh. He said, no, Thank God. no songs, no sidekicks. Uh, we're God. just we're just telling a clean, concise story. And it was one of the most fucking insane, streamlined, hand-drawn animation jobs. Fuck me. Ever done. They had, yeah, they had no staff. They had no time, no money. The whole movie is is hand drawn every frame, except the giant himself is CG'd in because they invented new fucking technology to CG render the Iron Giant in, but also remaining to look hand drawn. So that's why he feels like he kind of moves in yeah. weighted space yeah. a little bit more than the flat characters. Yes, yeah. which like knowing that and watching it, you're like, oh yeah, it it does feel a mm-hmm. little. And that's on purpose, you know? Absolutely. He, he feels very not of this world. Um, what do you think their Coke budget was like to get through crazy. this? Crazy. But Brad Bird said that ultimately one of the big things for cutting um, the budget, mm-hmm. no managers. Oh, nobody, fuck yeah. Nobody was hired just to do managerial logistics. It Thank was God. just a team of animators. That makes so much sense. Brad Bird, as the director, animated several scenes in this movie himself. I bet. Right? I because bet. everyone was just fucking working, Yeah, right? all pissed and inspiring. Yeah. Right? So it's, they were like, this story needs to be clean because every frame that's hand-drawn that we don't use is a massive waste of time yeah. and energy. Yeah. So they had to have this fucking locked yeah. in. And that's why it's so good. Mm-hmm. Is because they knew everything that was done with intention mm-hmm. was done with thought, with purpose, and with care. And I just think that, yeah. you know, when you're... And you let creators create. Right, and when your movie budget is... So the budget of this was $50 million, which does seem like kind of a lot, but when you think about, you know, the scale, yeah. and also compared to Disney stuff, but it only made 31.3 at the box office. So this is a certified Ugh. flop, This is which is crazy, because to me, like, in retrospect, I'm like, The Iron Giant is one of the greatest movies of the 90s. Like, Absolutely. It, I just can't believe, and I think so many people would agree with that, uh-huh. Complete box office mm-hmm. failure. Uh, yeah, it doesn't shock me. But that sort of driving force, that spite, I think, yeah, kind of comes through a little bit in the mm-hmm. like, yeah, fuck the authorities, fuck the FBI. The FBI they, is Disney. Thank Disney God. is the FBI in this situation, right? Yeah. Or Disney is the American military. No, literally. But no, I, th- I think that that makes it so much better and that makes yeah. so much sense. Yeah, it's really cool. I, I almost wanted to go listen to some of the music from the Pete Townsend musical because that is also a thing that exists that you yeah, can, I know that you can go uh listen to I I haven't checked it out but I'm curious to see cuz I I also don't know anything about the book um yeah. so the differences between the book and the movie are just what I saw on like 
people's fun facts mm-hmm. on IMDb or whatever. Yeah. Um, cool. But it does seem like involving, making him fucking nuke himself. Crazy. Was in the movie, like, was not from the book. I, I can imagine a lot of it's not from the book. I think that a lot of it got its legs in the studio. Which is just, it's just so fucking good, man. I just can't. <laughs> They're like, what if E.T. was a mech? <laughs> and then got nuked in the no fucking wonder, sky. No wonder you love, um... E.T. Well, Pacific Rim. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's like E.T. meets Pacific Rim is mm-hmm. Iron Giant. That's like yeah. the holy trinity of movies. Yeah. How do you feel about... I f- and maybe this is, um... This is kind of new news to me. I feel like this is one of those movies that girls will, like, kind of joke about because, like, alt boys really like this movie, you know what I mean? Oh, is this movie one of those? Like, Red I Flag? I think so. I don't know. But I feel like a lot of men have tattoos of Mr. Giant. Oh. See, so. that would be... I feel like I would think that's a green flag. It's a... Right. I mean, if you're gonna, absolutely you should. With the little do you think dent? It's, do you think it's a daddy issues thing, though? Mm, maybe. Or it's just, you know, that you just appreciate the greatest movie ever made. Exactly. I don't know. I can't fault anyone for having an Iron Giant tattoo. I've never heard of anyone, like, referencing that as being, like, a, you know, Fight Club-esque, questionable It's a great movie. It's a great movie. Maybe it's just because I like it, so I think it's valid. Exactly. Like, you're... You have, you, I feel like you tend to have a lot of those opinions, though. I do. I kind of like movies for boys sometimes. Yeah. But I think I'm more, I'm like, this is, this is for boys, I can tell, but it still got me. Exactly. No, nothing wrong with that. But circling back, Hogarth's mom, who's <laughs> so hot, yeah. why is her hair a cinnamon bun? Oh she is everything my god. To yeah. Dean? Yeah, sexual awakening for you. Oh my god, that's the perfect man. Uh huh. Drinking, he owns a business. Yep. <laughs> business owner, blue collar man. Love. But he also is an artist. Mm hmm. And that's beautiful. Him drinking I love that the cup side of hustle. coffee. Ugh. Him in his bathrobe drinking a cup of coffee mm-hmm. out on his own front lawn. Oh yeah. That, like, was a fucking horny hammer to my mm-hmm. skull as a child. I bet. That's the <laughs> perfect man. Yeah. Him in the bomber jacket when they all go to the lake. Why did they make him so sexy? They made him really hot. Do you know what I think this is? What? I think it's, like, divorced parents, your mom's new boyfriend is cool po- propaganda. Because mm. it's very, like... Well, there's not a lot of that. It's only at the very end that we know that yes. they get together. Yeah. And they only get together because Hogarth, you know, situationally of breaks them together. But I do think Dean is sort of the embodiment of, like, the mom's boyfriend type, right? He lives in the bachelor pad. Mm-hmm. He's got a weird kind of job and weird interests that, mm-hmm. you know, he, Hogarth doesn't really understand. But it's still, like, this mm-hmm. kinship and this buddy-buddy yeah. thing. Like, from the very beginning, he starts talking to him yeah. in the diner and there's mm-hmm. a, a rapport. Mm-hmm. Your mom's new boyfriend is cool. Yeah. Dean your mom's new boyfriend pretty fucking cool and you're Hogarth you should just you should just talk to him that's about your, his art that's your, yeah that's your best buddy now he might be an okay guy you should give him exactly. a chance well I feel like there's so much anti um stepdad propaganda yep. Miss Doubtfire yep um and stepmom like step your parents new significant other is the villain is usually a central point in a oh lot yeah. of kids media whereas oh I mean yeah. this isn't explicitly what, the parent trap yeah, <laughs> literally, it's better to get your parents back together from their divorce uh-huh. than to let them see new people fucking grow up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the but, only one that comes to mind. But yeah, I mean, it's not overtly that. It's They get together at the very end, mm-hmm. and it's just seen to be sort of this happy little thing. Well, thank God they didn't force a romance mid-movie. That would have pissed me off. It just wouldn't make any sense. Exactly. And again, that would have been fucking budget Mm-hmm. They don't have time. We don't have time to develop exactly. the B plot. <laughs> exactly. It's a, uh, you know. This robot has a heart. This robot <laughs> needs to learn about the complexities of human emotion in 90 minutes or less. We need uh-huh. to teach this robot what death is. Truly. That it has a soul. We have to get him mm-hmm. from being a hunk of metal to basically a purple heart receiver. <laughs> In the span of 90 minutes, Uh um, and it still needs to be for kids. And they manage. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Well, I love a kid's movie that also doesn't dumb anything down for you. Like, yes, Hogart did get chloroformed. Yes. Yeah. The military 
dying left and right thanks to this beast. That was a wild thing, this movie that I was this time around. Like, oh my god, yeah, media today, they would never, never. show that kind of thing. Or the government, or again, authority figures yeah. in that sort of life. Light, but him straight up getting chloroformed yep. by a cop. Yep. Insanity. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, also just like the whole nuclear uh, panic. We're going to drop a bomb. Just kidding. The Iron Giant's going to fly into the nuke and save us all mm-hmm. because of the power yeah. of fucking friendship. Like, <laughs> that's powerful as hell. Well, and I... Uh, I'm so happy that this movie still struck a balance of where it's pulling at my heartstrings and I'm crying because he's telling Hogarth to not follow him while he goes on this suicide mission. Mm -hmm. And then in the end, everything works out still. He's still pulling himself back together wherever he is and Hogarth knows it. And he says, go, I'll see you later. Oh my God. You stay, I go. No following. Mm-hmm. Oh my <laughs> god! I was crying in the club. Uh, but I feel like it's I like it's it's not all the whole like um, rainbows and butterflies and daisies and shit like mm-hmm. that. It's still like oh, this is sad. Yeah, I almost <laughs> wonder if that was like a post testing thing that everyone was like, "This is too sad." There needs to be like an inkling of hope that the robot is still alive. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's still for kids. We can't just nuke the main <laughs> guy and then have kids be okay with that. Like, there uh-huh. needs to be like, mm-hmm. and then he rebuilds himself. Yeah, kind of moment. That um, makes sense to me. Oh, hey, hi, Jen. Would I have ever shown up to your work with a squirrel in a box and been like, "Can we keep?" this pet? No, because I respect you. And also they don't allow animals in the hospital. So what that wasn't going to happen. But anyways, I was trying to loop in a way that you're like Hogarth's mom because, uh, hey, because you're here. Welcome to your interim podcast segment. What are you going to say, Emily? I was just going to say Jen is also comparable to Jen Aniston as I find I've yeah, I find her, I find yeah. you both very soothing. I was getting, the mom is Jennifer Aniston. That's what I was wow. thinking. I would want to do a yoga class with both of you. Jen is here to do chocolate or vanilla, her interim podcast segment. She's going to say two things. We're all going to say which one we like better. Hi, Jen. How are you? I am pretty good. I am pretty good. Is there a theme this week? The theme is non-Disney animated movies. Oh, oh fabulous. Gotta love it. Yeah. We've been going I- off the rails about Disney this episode. Yeah. Fuck the mouse. I tried to do movies we haven't really talked about too much before because okay. I feel like I feel like this might be repeat theme. So. Honestly, at this point, like people are like, God, we just cannot hear this girl talk about how much she loves cheese anymore. Like, shut the <laughs> fuck up. You know what I mean? I feel like there are some opinions yeah. that just shine through over the years of chocolate or vanilla. Uh-huh. And I'm like, yeah, I do bring that up a lot. Yeah. I do bring <laughs> no, up John Travolta's do. dead son a lot. Yeah, that does happen. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, really am hammering those opinions home. But let's get into it. Okay. Um, chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Vanilla. Chocolate. Uh, chocolate, vanilla, or strawberry? Chocolate. Strawberry. Mm, I'm going to go strawberry also. Uh, first one. Prince of Egypt, Sinbad, or Road to El Dorado? Ooh, three bangers. You watch all three in a row. That's the right answer. But I don't know if this is controversial, but I'm going to say Road to El Dorado. That one, mm. I feel like I loved as a kid. And then I watched it fairly recently. And I was like, holds up. Very good. That's the one that I remember the least. Oh, um, really? Honestly, yeah. Sinbad I liked, but I'm going to have to go Prince of Egypt on this one. I think it's iconic. And then that one song that it has, it probably has more than one song, but the one that I'm thinking of. The epic one? Banger. Yeah, the epic one. That's all, yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> I feel like the scene in Sinbad when they're on an eye The eye? Yes. That is like that really seared into my brain as a child. Mm. That's maybe where some texture issues come from. The goopy yeah, um, eyeball. <laughs> we're going to split on this one because I'm definitely going to say Sinbad. Mm-hmm. I like that one when you guys were little. Um, next one. Rio or Shark Tale? Shark Tale. Rio, Easy. Rio is nothing to me. Rio means absolutely nothing. A Shark Tale... Angelina Jolie, as they mm. 
finally fucking found a way to make a fish sexy. How did they do it? They did it. They did it. Um, yeah, I'm definitely gonna go Shark Tale. This one as well. Uh, but yeah, Shark Tale, that movie. that That's one that I loved as a kid. Like, wore out the disc. Remember watching it in the car on the back of the, like, plug-in TV that you have that, like, slips over the back yes. seat. Yep. I just, um, I love the memes of that little shrimp who's like, and the sister had a baby. <laughs> <laughs> the baby had no legs. The baby had no legs. That's what I feel like I sound like when I talk. Like, the <laughs> murder, <laughs> it's like that but also the meme of um it's not even a meme yet it's just um the video of oh god um okay pearl what's her name why can't i think of th- oh mia, mia goth <laughs> speaking portuguese yes and she sounds like she's um isabella from the nook stores <laughs> <laughs> Tom Nook at the Nook shop, bro. No, that's Mia Goth. That's how you know know that bitch can act because that's what her voice sounds like. She's like, oi, mister! (laughs) Uh, um, Yeah, we'll go um, Shark Tale also for sure. And then um, next one, Horton Hears a Who or The Lorax? The Lorax was like weirdly, I was never into it, but I was really on Tumblr at the time where the girlies got way into the onceler, like, and it was this whole thing and it kind of haunts me. And like, sometimes I feel like I'm having a Mandela effect thing where like nobody but me remembers that this mm. happened, that the, the girlies were loving the onceler from the Lorax movie in fucking 2012, whenever it came out. So weird. But I feel like those movies came out just a little too late for us. Like we were yeah. like 11 or 12 when those came out. I didn't out. see either of them. But I think I prefer the idea of the Lorax as to Horton here. Do you who. know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I don't even know if I know what, what the one slur is. Um, I will pick Lorax because of Zac Efron. Zac Efron? Oh, uh, fair. Yeah, right? Yeah. Who is he? Yeah. The main guy, Ted? Ted? Um, all right, let's see. Next one, next one, next one. Ice Age or The Crudes? Ooh, Ice Age. That's again. I think that's just like a, a age thing because we were yeah. we were ready. We were in the exact mind space to accept Scrat the Squirrel into my life as my Lord and Savior. <laughs> and the Crudes. Again, I think I was like in middle school when the Crudes came out. I have no recollection Definitely. of anything about it. But Ice Isn't Age. Florence Pugh in like the second one or something like that. No, no Florence like... Pugh. You might be thinking of she was in the Puss in Boots movie. No. There's like Emma, Emma Stone and like Ryan Reynolds and Nicolas Cage, right? Mm. Hmm. Just a bunch of A-list celebrities getting their bag by not voice acting good, just showing up. Fuck you, Ryan Reynolds. I don't need to hear your voice anymore. I don't know. Can't even find it on Letterboxd. Jesus Christ. Whatever. Um, yeah, I'll go Ice Age, even though I did not like Ice Age as a kid. Really? Was not for me. Oh, I feel like... That, f- that baby freaked me out. Yeah. Well, yeah, you and everyone else. And everyone is really into the saber-toothed tiger. Yeah. Mm, yeah, not for me. I'm good on that. Yeah, I actually... I watched The Croods fairly recently, like, within the last couple of years, and I, I actually did like it. I thought it was good. Um, next one. Over the Hedge or Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs? Oh, Over the Hedge. Over the Hedge exists in this really, like, hyper-specific kind of genre of movies from this time. It's, like, Over the Hedge, fucking, um, uh, Hoodwinked. Do you know what oh, I'm talking about? Like, I wish, God! I those, wish I those that of, one. Those sort of straight-to-the-DVD bin at Walmart kind of animated movies that just, oh, the energy of them was so fucking cracked out. It's insane. insane. Loved Over the Hedge. Yeah, I am also on the over the hedge wave. That was again one that was running in the DVR or the DVD mm. player on the back seat of the car. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's I um that whole like you said that whole era is in the car portable DVD player fun. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. but I will... And it was like <laughs> it was a pain in the ass to get him on before the trip. <laughs> One wasn't working. It was a, yeah. And it's always like once you're at the good part, it's like, "Okay, we're at grandma's house." And I'm like, Shrek just got to the castle. Like, what are <laughs> we talking about? 
Um, I I liked Cloudy with the Tits Meatballs, though, so I'm going to go with that. Um, I never saw it. Oh, you should. I feel like I remember, I have a distinct memory of being however old I was when that came out, and feeling like this was the first time that they were doing something kind of fucked up. Like, they took a a children's book that is near perfect, simple, kind of messed doesn't have it. anything. Yeah. And they were like, he's a corked up scientist. And I was like, he's not in the book. Like, what the fuck is your problem? You know, they were really, they really, you know, loosely based on. And I was like, oh, so mm-hmm. they can just really take anything and just fucking ruin it, huh? For yeah. money. That's what I think the first time I was like, oh, this looks like shit. Like, I'm pissed off. Mm-hmm. I'm 12 and I'm pissed off. <laughs> the shoes that he sprays on that sounds like something that should be aesthetically pleasing to me no hated it all of this means nothing to me <laughs> um and next one is um anesthesia or nimona anesthesia i love this is only nimona came out last year yeah. and jen watched it because oh, yeah. you decided to watch all of the animated oscar nominated films and yeah. it was on it i've heard really great things people love Nomona, this movie, I guess it's like really good representation. Like it's a really good example of like right. a new kids movie that's like not in like a pandery way. Cause you know yeah. how that can feel sometimes cool. where they're like, this movie's woke. And you're like, yeah, yeah, you don't have to tell me. Like you can just cast yeah. diverse people without like doing a wink, uh-huh. you know? Um, but I'm gonna pick Anastasia, obviously. I love that movie. Uh, yeah, I barely remember watching Anastasia as a kid, but I, I do remember bits and pieces, so I'll, I'll go Anastasia yeah. on this. I, I loved Anastasia, but I want you guys to watch Nimona, so I want to say Nimona. Um, Fair enough. Next one. Thumbelina or Fern Gully? Fern Gully! Oh, I love me some Fern Gully. Again, speaking of movies that radicalized me as a child, like how do you... Greta Thunberg fucking watched Fern Gully. I bet my life on it. I definitely have never watched Fern Gully. They're gonna tear down that... the forest and they need to stop them. What was my other option? Thumbelina. Thumbelina. I like her name better, so I guess I'll go Thumbelina on this one. I think Thumbelina might be one of those ones they've done a number of versions because I remember that from when I was a kid. So I'm gonna I'm gonna mm. pick Thumbelina. Um, next one is Balto or Megamind. Ooh, I actually weirdly do like both of these. Kind of tough. Balto, iconic hot dog, but I am gonna say Megamind. <laughs> low key, kind of slaps. Megamind was cracked again, and uh, it was a good um, energy that it brought. I'll go Megamind on this one. All right, I'm, I'm going to go Balto. Uh, next one is Kubo and the Two Strings, or Kung Fu Panda, or How to Train Your Dragon. Ooh, I've been really wanting to revisit How to Train Your Dragon, because I don't think I ever saw any of the sequels, but I remember liking the first one, and a lot of like adult people like really talk about those movies as if they're like very special to them. Um, like yeah. even, you know, it's like you were 20 when the fourth one came out. Like, no, I was in line, you know, like people name their cats yeah. toothless all the time. Like it's very that. So I'm interested to visit it to see what it's all about, but it's just really been too long since I've seen it for me to have a real opinion. Um, I also feel the same way. I never watched any of them. Um, I'm starting to realize I did not watch all that many like kids movies um, growing up. I feel like I rewatched you were, a ton. You were busy jumping right into musicals. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Oh my god. Gene um, was like, but... "We're gonna just put Mama Me on. Don't worry about exactly. it." Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor <laughs> Dreamcoat. Play. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah. I'll. I'll go. Um, I'm going to pick uh, How to Train Your Dragon on this one because I have a friend um, that has an axolotl named Toothless. So in his in his honor. Yeah, see, everyone knows a bitch with a pet. Um, yeah, I will right? go How to Train Your Dragon for the sweep. And uh, last one. Osmosis Jones or Madagascar? Oh, oh. both are really good. I am going to pick Osmosis Jones. I constantly <laughs> think about like that exact scenario right of the little body parts i love also like in the magic school bus Mm -hmm, let's get go inside arthur you know that is Uh what i want every tv show should by law have to do an inside the body character navigation episode Uh give it to me i don't care if it doesn't make sense shrink ray them down and get them in there 
Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to go Osmosis Jones on this one, too, because there was probably two, maybe three times that I walked into the, my science class, Ooh. and they had Osmosis Jones up and ready for us to watch, and it was the best day ever. So, Osmosis Jones. Yeah, me too, me too. I feel like there, there was a movie where, like, um, in the 80s where they shrunk Martin Short down and put him inside of Dennis Quaid, maybe? Oh, thank yeah. God. <laughs> yeah, I need this, right? Like, that's, I'm constantly imagining that scenario. I want to get so small and, like, crawl inside my own ear a bunch. <laughs> it's always the ear oh. with you. <laughs> the Check out those me. sinuses, like, really get up in there, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? Mm. Um, and that is it. I actually, you guys got more excited about the animated movies than I thought you were going to, so. Yeah, I yeah. feel like the non-Disney ones are the ones that really get me riled up, right? Because they mm. they have texture. They're a little gritty. The uh, the baby from Ice Age is so fucking ugly, right? Like, what does Disney oh, have? Like, nothing. Right. They don't follow the same plot line either. Yeah, I hear ya. Yeah. But thanks, Jen. Love having you, as always, giving us a platform to yell our opinions loudly. The same ones, over and over, every week, and you're going to listen to it. Uh, Jen, we love you. We'll see you next week. All right. I love you guys. Have an awesome night. Bye. 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 But something that I didn't know until this watch mm -hmm. is that there's a specific scene, a specific sequence that got cut from the theatrical release and the original DVD release. But now when you watch it on like Amazon or whatever, it's in there. So okay. it's this very short scene that got cut and it's um, the Iron Giant has this sort of dream sequence. And it's after souls do not die, right? We have that conversation. Yeah. He's essentially sentient at this point. He goes to sleep in the junkyard. Mm -hmm. And then it sort of morphs in with this vision of Dean watching the TV. And it's this late night show talk host. Mm -hmm. And it sort of blends the Iron Giant's dream with what Dean is watching mm -hmm. on TV. And we get a little bit of lore about, like, where the giant comes from, right? We yeah. see, like, an army of them uh -huh. marching on a planet and things getting blown up and uh -huh. just a little bit of, like, a peek into his psyche. Yeah. And th But then the door shuts and we move uh -huh. on. And that whole sequence was originally completely scrapped, but it's in there now. And I remember thinking that it jumped out to me visually as being very different. Yeah. Because it is a dream sequence and it was uh -huh. just animated in a kind of a different way, but it was so beautiful and so striking uh -huh. that I was like, this doesn't feel familiar to me because this movie feels very familiar to me. Every was this scene. One, one that you wore down? Wore down. The scene of him putting the um, whipped cream into In the, the Twinkie, Twinkie yep. and it foaming out the yep. sides mm -hmm. is something that I can like close my eyes and see it happen in my mm -hmm. mind. That's how, and all the scenes of him eating the metal. Yeah. Miss Mojo, top 10, <laughs> Iron Giant eating metal scenes <laughs> that gave me... Pike off. <laughs> the desire to just chomp on wet cement. Oh. Like, they made it look so fucking scrumptious. I know. Um, I really tried to figure out something that was gonna be, like, eating metal yeah. for um, this week's Try, like, food what? and drink. I just, I always say nerds clusters because that's kind of gravelly to me. I just ate some nerds clusters before I came here. I love the Phenomenal. blue and the red. Blue. Yeah, I love the blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, But this dream sequence, essentially, did end up getting cut Mm -hmm. And I was kind of thinking about it, and, and I think it's just because we get that little piece of lore, mm -hmm. right, about who the giant is, is that he does come from yeah. a race of giant machines that were built specifically to For be weapons, war. to destroy planets, and then mm -hmm. eat. they eat the metal? Why do they eat the metal? Uh, I don't really... He defected, though. It doesn't make any sense. Well, and so apparently from the blast of the planet, we're supposed to Im imply that he was one of the guns that blows up the planet and the blast is what shot him to earth mm. and that's mm -hmm. but to me that does kind of conflict with him having the ability to learn the difference between good and bad because if you're a machine that was just built to be a gun mm -hmm. but i guess then that's our our whole thesis right what if yeah. a gun didn't want to be a gun exactly what if a gun met a, a really charming child <laughs> In the woods <laughs> of Maine, you know? Like, this one wasn't too precocious for you? He's a little precocious. I think I identified a lot with Hogarth when I was little, though, because yeah. I was very, like, yeah. kind of that. Yeah. You were definitely a precocious child. I can mm -hmm. see it in your eyes. Yeah, like, I don't know. <laughs> they pulled me out of reading because I'm too good at reading. Like, it's very that, <laughs> right? It's like, okay. We get it. You're, you're talented. <laughs> but I'm going to bring a squirrel into the house because I'm also corked up. You know, like, it's... it's <laughs> 
I'll tell you what, while Dean might have been your sexual awakening, um, I found that I had a lot of gender envy this time around Ooh. with him. Oh, the turtleneck? Mm-hmm. Yep. I mm. wish I could have a little goatee. Well, I mean, I'm trying to do the floppy hair thing right now. It's getting there. You do look like a boy who plays lacrosse. I know. I gotta get the back cut, right? I would, I'll would. i give you that, I think. Thank you. Thank you. And you're like, you're good at lacrosse, too. Oh, fuck yeah. Like, you've got the... You, yeah, 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 You've got the swag. Like I'm going D2, at least. It's because you've got the moves to back it up. Fuck yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, Dean... Oh my god, I wanted to be him. I also just loved his apartment. Yeah. The, the space. Like, oh, yeah. Um, his little his little trailer on the junkyard. Mm-hmm. So perfect. And of course, let's make him a beatnik. Let's make him a true artist at heart. What more could I want? So complex. Mm-hmm. And we get it, we get it in such a little time. Oh, and yeah. immediately you he they meet at the diner and you know what the fuck Dean mm-hmm. is about. Mm-hmm. Dean was marching for civil rights, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dean was out there uh-huh. getting petitions signed. Exactly. Exactly. Ugh. Him and Hogarth's mom, he's going to rope her in. Oh, thank God. She's, I know. Yeah. yeah. They're going to get like real hippie with it, mm-hmm. but like mm-hmm. not like white privilege hippie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but. Oh my goodness. Um, I love, okay. Design wise. Mm. When he, uh, it's tough because I mean he's already so fucking cool. He's a giant robot, right? Mm-hmm. But the design of his weaponry that he's using when he's fighting um, with the military is so fucking sick, dude. Him locking in, <laughs> him locking the fuck in. That's this me is what I look like when- outside the grocery store, <laughs> right? This is like before I have to really make it happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I go full gun, right? <laughs> like. <laughs> This is me navigating the transit system in Boston (laughs) before going anywhere that's not my usual route. Right? You're like... (laughs) (laughs) Suddenly my head becomes an AR-15. Like... Yeah, so good. yeah. I'm so, blasting all of the cockroaches at the downtown crossing <laughs> station. <laughs> so not to fun fact you into oblivion. Oh, please. But part of the reason why you find this design to be so pleasing is because Brad Bird, again, was like, I have no fucking money. Mm-hmm. We need to make this as efficient as possible. So he went to the designer who primarily did a lot of the early drawings in Star Wars for, like, the at Fuck, yes. And, like, the, in the ships, right? The big... Fuck, yeah. The big machines guy uh-huh, from, yeah. from Star Wars. Basically, he was like, hey, this is, you know, yeah. this is what we're working with. Helps out. And he drew up all these things and was like, essentially, you can get so much out of this because he's only going to emote using his eyelids and his jaw that mm-hmm. doesn't move up and down, but slides, right? Yeah. So we get that sort of sliding jaw motion mm-hmm. and then the twisting eyelids. Yeah. That's all that moves on his face. Mm-hmm. Cheap, easy to animate, so effective. Mm-hmm. You know when he's curious. You yeah. know when he's surprised. The big lights behind the eyes, mm-hmm. so iconic. It's like, it doesn't need to be any more complicated than no. that. But when it's time for him to fucking lock in and become a gun. Oh, dog. You fucking bet we're going Star Wars on that uh-huh. shit. Like, uh-huh. yeah, he's a- We're going to make this complex as fuck. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, as a kid, I always remember that specific moment being like, oh, I know I'm not supposed to like this, mm-hmm. but it's so good. Well, I mean, it's just like, it, it was so fucking cool. I don't even know how else to, it was just so fucking cool. And like, I re- specifically watching this one, um, it's like when they sort of get back to the town and it's towards the end of the fight, I guess, mm-hmm. but he's still sniping, um, all of the military machines and everything like that. And it was like, something pops up and like the way he bursts, like burst fires them. Mm. Do you know what I'm talking about? Not it's, specifically. Oh but... my God. It just like, it, it kissed my brain. So it like itched your brain the same way that him picking up Dean's tree sculpture and just corn cobbing that yeah. fucking metal off <laughs> yeah. it. Just, oh, that's... Exactly. Also, to me, another hashtag oddly satisfying <laughs> is um, when he gets the train tracks back together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. exactly. Yep. Exactly right. That also did some irreparable damage to me as a child. I'm like, <laughs> no, he's right. It does have to be perfect. I also will get hit by the train <laughs> yeah. if it means that I have to get it right. Uh-huh. right? Like, I'm, I'm not moving. Um. <laughs> so good. But, yeah, that scene at the end where he basically locks in, becomes a fucking gun, um, and then nukes himself. Yeah. Insane. Because Kent Mansley is the one who pulls the trigger at the end to be like, drop the nuke. Yeah. And 
The guy from the military who's just been here the whole time and we're in northern Maine. <laughs> okay, the U.S. military is just hanging out. Like, mm -hmm. they kind of make joke of, like, Kent Mansley, I'm the guy that the government sends when something mm -hmm. is not really that big of an issue, but... You know, you gotta send somebody to yeah. check it out. And suddenly, the fucking Air Force is there. Like, I know he's he's trying to get this proof from Hogarth, which he does eventually in the yeah. photo, to be like, hey, you need to tell me the truth because they're not gonna send people here until we fucking know yeah. it, right? They're there so goddamn fast. Oh, yeah. With the nukes. Uh -huh. They're like, no, we ju we brought the nukes in a submarine. Of course just we to did. Be sure. Of course we did. What the hell? But he's like, yeah, do it. Nuke the child. Mm -hmm. Nuke that child I hate. Yeah. <laughs> I guess Kent Mansley could be a figure for an unlikable stepdad. Because he Absolutely. does he does come in. He moves in. Moves in and acts like he runs the place. Exactly. So this movie's playing both sides a little bit. And I love that. It's like you can like your mom's cool new boyfriend, but you can hate once he's it. once he's your stepdad, yeah. it's fucking over. Yeah, yeah. You can still hate authority. Um I'll tell you what I don't hate is a snack with a movie. Okay, let's get into it. Tell okay. me, what are you going to eat and drink with the Iron Giant? I, like I said before, I really wish I could find something that... It's like eating sheet metal. Exactly. I want to go Jackie Kennedy on this bitch. <laughs> I want to be eating the sheet metal. <laughs> like, And like the only thing that was popping into my mind was like... Fucking um, five gum, you know what I mean? Because yeah, of the wrappers. It's not the same. It's no. not the same. At all. Um, so, second best thing in my head um, was going for the main aspect of it. <gasps> I did too. And so I said, um, you either, if you want to splurge and treat yourself, which I think you should if you're watching The Iron Giant, I think you either... If you can manage to make a lobster roll, make a lobster roll. Mm -hmm. If you have somewhere near you that will make a lobster roll if for you. If you live in a coastal area, go get yourself a lobster roll. Do not eat a lobster roll if you are from Kansas. No, please. That's not going to be okay. Yeah. Seafood, mm -hmm. a little too far from the sea. I think mm -hmm. we're very spoiled. Very spoiled. We've always lived, you know, within two hours of the ocean, yeah. <laughs> so everything is pretty. I never realized that, like, people in the middle of the country just don't get to have no. that. Mm -mm. I don't even it's really fuck with seafood shame. like that. But. It's not for me, honestly, but I still think a hot buttered mm. lobster roll or, like, a crab cake, yeah. something of that nature um, would be ideal. Mm. Um, and then I think just a summery drink would be fun. Um, and I, it, it's called a partly cloudy. Partly cloudy. It's called a partly cloudy. I found it on TikTok. Oh, tell me all oh. about it. Uh, it's two ounces of dark rum, an ounce of pineapple juice, um, half ounce of uh, honey syrup, and then a half ounce of lemon. And I really wanted something that would be topped with ginger beer. So you top it with ginger beer. Ooh, <laughs> that sounds like any like rum based tiki adjacent cocktail. It's yeah. like. One and a half ounces of white rum, one ounce spice rum, pineapple juice, yep. and something else. And they're like, and it's called a blank. And I'm like, haven't I heard this before? <laughs> exactly. It's all the same. Is it's this all the same. Is this not what I'm getting when I order a Mai Tai? Like, can we just yeah, exactly. clear that up? But I think it sounded like a good mix with, like, a summer, um, yeah. you know, chips and lobster. Is it, like, boomer of me or, like, I don't know, too uptight of me to think that if... A cocktail is on your menu. You should have to put the things in the cocktail that a standard recipe calls for. Like, I understand. Well, I no, guess. It's I not guess, too boomer of you. I guess what in, do you mean? I guess, like, in cooking, it's always like you can have creative liberties. But I'm like, I don't know. Like, a. Well, I guess a gin and tonic is you just say the names of the ingredients. But, like, say, like, a Manhattan. But yeah. it's like, oh, here, we make it with this instead of vermouth. No, and I'm like, fun. okay, so that's not a Manhattan. Yeah. Then. Like, like when a cocktail menu... Like especially, like, standard things. But when a cocktail menu calls something a martini, I'm like, but it's not a martini. It's in a martini exactly. glass. Exactly, yeah. Like, what do you mean? Just call it something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyways, that's my... I just... Ordering cocktails out lately has just made me so angry that I just don't even fucking do it anymore. It's fourteen dollars. It. It's not worth it's it. It's bullshit. I'm fucking pissed. It doesn't even taste that good. Rip and nip in the bathroom. Right. I'm like, and you didn't even put anything in here. I know. That I thought would be in here. There's hardly booze sometimes. But I also went Maine. Okay. And Enlighten me. The state treat. <laughs> not to be confused with the state dessert. 
Okay. Which is two <laughs> two completely different things. Please tell me you know what both are. Oh uh, yeah, of course. Okay, okay. So what's the, what's the treat? The state treat of Maine is a whoopie pie. Fuck yeah. Which of course, especially post Twinkie scene. If you well, so I was thinking about the Twinkie. I don't really want a Twinkie. No. But I was like, what is sort of like a Twinkie? A whoopie right? pie. A whoopie pie. Whoopie pie is the official state treat of Maine. It's called um, some other things in other places. If you don't know what a I meant to write really? this down on pie. Yeah, it's we call it a whoopie pie here, but other places call them a black moon, a gob, a black and white, or a BFO, standing for Big Fat a Oreo. Black and white? That's not... That's no, different. The no, black and white a is a whole, half and half, yeah. A black and white is cookie. Uh, is a, yeah. If you call a whoopie pie a black, a black, and, black and white, you're fucked. Hey, and I'm you're, well, you're doing something wrong. I'm that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what it essentially is... I love a black is, and white cookie. I hate black and white cookies. Really? I had an experience. Uh-huh. I ate too many while simultaneously having the flu. And I was like, That'll I shouldn't do have done it. that. Yeah. yeah, I... Yeah. But a whoopie pie, if you don't know, it's basically like two little c- cakes. Yeah. Two little circular... Chocular cakes. Chocular? <laughs> circular and chocolate cakes uh, with frosting in the uh-huh. middle. And they're just lovely. They're just delightful. Oh, yeah. Um, it's the state treat of Maine. The state dessert of Maine is the blueberry pie. Obviously. Of course it is, yeah. Um, Ooh, I bet someone out there's definitely made like a blueberry whoopie pie. Ooh. Yeah. I like a pumpkin whoopie pie. Oh, like that with good. some like cinnamon in the frosting. A cream cheese frosting. Oh, you slob. With a puppy... Oh, what? Pumpkin whoopie pie, a puppy pie, a puppy, pumpkin whoopie pie. <laughs> wow, I'm gonna kill myself now. Um, but then I was, episode's ruined. Episode ruined. I was also thinking about um like iconic food scenes in this movie. Yeah. And then there's where we get the milkshake, right? Him. Yeah. And Kent, and he crumbles up the laxative chocolate, and mm-hmm. he puts it on top of his yeah. milkshake, and he basically does it under the guise of like. This is a fun little thing that I we do. do. Yeah. But I crush up the chocolate in my hand and I put it on the uh-huh. milkshake and I'm, you know, but yours is laxative. But I think you should just have that. I think you yeah. should just have a vanilla milkshake with crushed up bits of candy yeah. bar in it. And then you should also have a whoopie pie. I, I, think, I think you should just get to have both of those so things. That's so indulgent. Yeah, I want both of them. Yeah. I want to dip my whoopie pie in the milkshake. <laughs> That's maybe too much. What kind of milkshake would you go for? Like standard vanilla? I would probably bog standard vanilla with the whipped cream and the chocolate just to match the film. But yeah. I love a coffee. A coffee yeah. milkshake. Yeah. That's everything mm-hmm. to me. Absolutely. But I, I would never turn down any milkshake unless it was Starbucks a malt. Shake? I don't fuck with malt powder. That shit is so nasty. I don't think I've ever had it. Do you know what a Whopper tastes like? I know like? what a Whopper tastes like. It's like yeah. It tastes like that. I like a Whopper, honestly. I hate. I guess I just have a thing against malt. Yeah, fair enough. Malted milk balls. Yeah, what are you gonna do? But um, if we want to play Fuck, Mary Kill, I feel like our main three are obviously Hogarth's mom, Dean, and Kent. I'd rather do the giant instead of Kent, though. Okay. Well, the giant is sort of a child. In my eyes. Uh, he's a baby. Right. He's, <laughs> he's Vin Diesel. He's just a baby. <laughs> like That's my tiny little giant. Wait, are you going to marry him? He can't. He does not have a penis. We canonically know he <laughs> yeah, doesn't have a penis. Even when he goes into gun mode. <laughs> things are sort of phallic, but there's nothing that's going <laughs> to... Yeah, I guess you're right. So we're just going to both kill Kem. Yeah, yeah. And then we're going to both... Mm, well, I don't know. I think I am going to marry Dean and fuck Hogarth's mom. I don't want to be a stepdad. <laughs> Even a cool stepdad? No, I would be an awful... I would be Kent Mansley. I'd be like, where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, yeah, I do think I have to marry Dean on this one. Dual income, no kids. Yeah. We have a really, really cool house, and he buys me expensive espresso beans. Right. Yeah, like we overindulge. We yeah. we sell one uh, painting, one sculpture mm-hmm. set for the year. Exactly. Fuck yeah. I also hated that like he did the sculpture at the end, but it wasn't reminiscent of any art of his that we had previously seen. I know, seen like, why'd you just cast it in bronze? It's it so boring. Be... Why would you not make it out of the scrap metal that he loved so much? Also, not to be a hater, but why the fuck is Hogarth in the statue? I know. You didn't get nuked, <laughs> Hogarth. <laughs> I know. We but understand that the the power of your friendship, but you really you really had to be in the, the commemorative statue. Yeah, it's a commemorative statue. Mm-hmm. That like, was a lot. I guess as we learn, it you know not fully power of friendship. I guess whatever. Because he's not dead. Yeah, but, but I'll, so yeah, I'll fuck Hogarth's mom then. Yeah, Jennifer Aniston. Yeah. You can't go wrong with that. Go to the diner afterwards. Oh yeah, that could be nice. Oh yeah, she'd treat me right. Give me some pancakes. Fill up my coffee. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then I go home to Dean. <laughs> 
<laughs> also, it's like a cakes and coffee. Yeah, and he'd yeah. ask me how my date was. And I'd say, fabulous. And I'd be like, she's in the other room. What are you talking about? Yeah, like, we all live here. Yeah. Like, like um, Our throuple. We've always all lived uh-huh. here. Um, and what are you following this movie up with? So I was really thinking about, like, kids movies that really radicalized me mm. and I was thinking like v- you know very a bug's life very just a, a lot of that energy mm-hmm. robots too yeah. and then I was like no we got to get away from that and then I was like okay war movies cold war what are some other cold yeah. war movies turns out not a lot of good ones no so then I was like okay, well, let's just think about war in general and of like course. a good war follow-up I feel would be of course one of my favorite anti-war war movies full metal jacket mm. very intense that's a Crazy change. You're already pretty emotionally raw. Yeah. And then you're going to go watch Full Metal Jacket. That's going to be tough. So I also said a good alternative option would be Oppenheimer. Yeah. Because what if a gun didn't want to be a gun? What if the man who made the bomb didn't want, want to make have made the bomb? Yeah. Right? So similar moral <laughs> dilemmas happening. I would like to think that uh-huh. Christopher Nolan should credit the Iron Giant yeah. a little bit. Uh, or at least Killian Murphy should have, you know, admitted that he drew his performance from... Based on the Iron Giant. Yeah, like, what if I did want to nuke myself to save the city of Rock... Rockport? Rockwell? Rock... Rockwell. Rockport, Maine is a real place. Rockport, Rockport Mass. Rockport, Mass. Rockwell, yeah. Maine is... Yeah. Sure. Um, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I did not go nearly as deep into it. I just figured I would definitely want to watch an animated kids movie reminiscent of... Um, what I had just watched Mm -hmm. and Atlantis is the perfect follow up for me also sort of more on the radical side Um, I think that the design of all of their gear tickles my brain even more than everything in this movie so I really get into it well we're getting a little steampunk with Atlantis right we're for sure we're putting a little more stank on it yeah 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 it's a little less believable yeah this one was fucking clean oh yeah those guns Mm -hmm. just mint Mm -hmm. yeah designed to actually work if you wanted to create the blueprints. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's why they can't have the Iron Giant, like... Made today. Uh, at No, I was gonna say, like, at theme parks. Because uh-huh. it would be too, too real. Yeah. Uh-huh. But obviously he'd be in his nice form. He wouldn't be. They're like, no, we have the Iron Giant in gun form here today. <laughs> I love to see it. It's like, you know how at Disney or whatever, they have like some interactive stuff, like you can pull the sword from the stone or whatever and stuff like that. I would want the Iron Giant to be there, and it's sort of the same idea as he's nice most of the time, but like, maybe twice a day. (laughs) He goes gun mode. Maybe twice a day, whenever a kid walks up, yeah, he goes gun mode on their ass. And he scares the shit out of them. Warner Brothers, is that at Universal? So Universal Studios, here's my pitch, is the ride is that it's the Iron Giant, he does go gun mode twice a day, (laughs) randomly, Um, you're gonna have to program that, but it is specifically the scene where he's holding the car, the like 1950s car with the in it, and he swings him around, and that looks fun as hell. Oh yeah. Why have they not made that into a ride yet? Truly. It's a missed opportunity. Right? That's yeah. because this movie wasn't fucking made to yeah. make rides about. It was made to be a piece of fucking art. Mm-hmm. Um, which it is. Shouts out Brad Bird. Shouts out The Incredibles. Shouts out. And what would you shout out this rating? I will shout this out at a 9 out of 10. Yeah. This I'm going to give it an 8. This movie's fucking perfect. Mm-hmm. No mm-hmm. notes. Nine. Have you ever given something a 10 on this? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Fact check me. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I wish I could... Go through. I wish I could always database look up like know, ch- chocolate nice. or vanilla questions yeah. or like stuff from. I wish I could just pull that. Uh, but alas, um, in another life. But alas, your Patreon dollars only keep on the mics and lights, and we don't use lights. So please go check that out. The links in the description below. Like I said, also Movie Grid. Check that out. Oh Fun. my god, so good. Fun little game. Also our other things. If you want, hey, tell us a good movie to watch. Only good please. movies. If you tell us a good movie to watch, we'll put it on the list. Mm-hmm. Worst things, worse, it's just on the list. You know, we don't there cover it, but we always... Maybe we'll cover it later. We always try to, yeah, pulling through Brook Drew literally over two years ago. I was like, can you please just do the Iron Giant already? And, and I was like, like, absolutely. I was like, we'll get to it. <laughs> two no, years later. Fully, the sun has come and gone. Yeah. But a thousand times. <laughs> um... But yeah, thank you for listening. As always, souls never die. Shouts out. You are what you choose to be and don't choose to be a gun. Choose to be fucking baller. (laughs) 